So Stacy, you're going to talk to us about the nine lines of movement. Yes, so um, the nine lines of movement are actually like a term to kind of encompass that. It's called ediokinesis, which means edio being like visualizing or imagining something or ideating something, and then kinesis being movement. Um, it was invented, the term was invented by a woman named Lulu Zweigard back in, I want to say the 70s. And then Irene Dowd was a student of hers, and she expanded upon the ideas of Dr. Zweigard. And so what the lines of movement are, um, ideokinesis, again, being visualizing, it's something where you do it only in your mind's eye, and um, basically imagining those lines of movement help to retrain your nervous system so that when you do go to move, that that training has happened and that repatterning has happened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course it takes work, but um, <laughs> the more often you do it, the more you can um, tune your body to do that. And that's actually something that Irene um, specified is that if you treat your body like an instrument, so if you were going to go play um, a concert somewhere, you would of course tune your violin. And um, so the idea with this, the lines of movement being that you can tune your body to be its most effective so that when you do go to move in whatever activity you want to participate in, whether it's yoga or soccer or basketball, um, your body is tuned. So for this tuning, you would, again, only do this in your mind's eye. So at no point would you actually move, but um, if people want to follow along, you go ahead and lie down. And you want to lie down in a position called constructive rest or anything that is basically essentially comfortable so that, that you know, nothing's pulling on your body. Gravity's not pulling you in any direction. So constructive rest, um, the way Irene Dowd describes it is to be lying on your back with your feet um, flat on the ground, knees bent, knees falling in towards each other. And then you would lie down with your hands, um, elbows bent, hands above your head. Again, and that just keeps everything supported. So your pelvis is supported, your arms are, aren't getting pulled down or pulling down on your shoulder girdle. So lying in that position, the first um, line of movement that you'd want to picture is your spine lengthening downward. So again, just do this in your mind's eye. And if you feel anything in your nervous system, if you start feeling muscles respond, that's great. Just observe that and see what happens. So spine lengthening down, down through your tail, down towards, if you're lying on a mat, down towards the bottom edge. And then the second line is to imagine the back of your pelvis, the width of your pelvis widening. So if you could picture that, that first line going down and then kind of pooling at the bottom and the back and that widens. And then the third line of movement would be that line, if you can picture that second line widening and kind of curling around to the front side of your pelvis to narrow. So those are almost kind of two line or one line together. If you combine those two lines, it ends up being one line. The fourth line is a little um, hard to describe, but if you can picture the, um, the very base of your rib cage, T12, the front side of your spine, and then also your pubic synthesis. And you can picture those two lines drawing together, those two points, I should say, drawing together. So that line shortens. And um, what's nice about that line is it engages some muscles that are a little bit hard to tap into, like your psoas. So that was the fourth line. The fifth line is imagine the center of your kneecap lining up with the center of your hip joint. And that actually takes care of your entire lower body. Um, your ankles will kind of just fall in line with your kneecap, if you can picture your kneecap centering with your hip joint. So you don't have to worry about the ankles at that point. <laughs> um, let's see, the sixth line. So picture your feet, picture your big toe and the center of your heel, and picture that line shortening as well. And um, really Hold your feet up into a nice tripod. Um, now the sixth line, am I in the sixth line or the seventh line? <laughs> I 
the next line <laughs> would be um, your rib cage. Yeah, if you could picture your rib cage expanding in all three directions, so up and forward and back and to the side, expanding as your diaphragm lowers, and then contracting as your diaphragm raises up on your exhale. And you can picture a nice spongy, huggable rib cage, completely untethered from the rest of your body. So you could come up and just squeeze it, and it would just feel delicious and yummy. So completely untethered, unimpeded rib cage. Um, next line, going to the eighth line. Picture your clavicle, your sternum, very top, and then the base of your skull, your occiput. Picture that line shortening as well. That can make you feel nice and tall. Um, you'll find that that relieves a lot of tension in your neck. And then the last line, and this is probably the most important, so if you can picture all the lines again, lengthening your spine downward, the back of your pelvis widening, the front of your pelvis narrowing, your pubic synthesis and T12 drawing towards each other and shortening, your kneecap lining up with the center of your um, hip joint on either leg, and then your big toe and your heel shortening together, um, your rib cage untethered, huggable, expansive, and then your occiput and your sternum, that line shortening. From all of those points, picture your skeleton um, lengthening upwards through the crown of your head because of all of those lines um, and those lines of movement that we described. And that lengthening upward or that growing tall, that means everything's pulling into your midline and um, really gravity is not even an issue for you anymore. <laughs> It should feel wonderful, and from that place, you can move um, and do whatever you want from a perfectly tuned body. So, um, those are the lines of movement, and it actually, I found it's actually a great meditation if you're just trying to focus on yourself, <laughs> going through and just picturing that. It's amazing what you feel in your nervous system and the way your nervous system responds, and there's no wrong way, so if you picture a line shortening, um, you know, what are the lines shortening towards each other? What you feel in your body what line goes what point going goes towards the other point is what your body needs so just honor that and that's it those are the lines of movement so that's great <laughs> really well explained i don't have any questions